Hello. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome to this live interactive reveal um, for some, um, a share that was on the page a few, a couple days ago. And here's what you would have seen. So if you haven't yet chosen a pile of cards, take a moment to have a look at that post and choose left, right, or center. It's been quite a while since I've been live. I feel very anxious and a little bit nervous to uh, be showing myself again after um, what did we want to say? Some time in the cave, my cave. There's been a lot going on in the world. And uh, like many of you, I have just been in the thick of it and uh, really focusing on self-care and what's needed in order for me to maintain my stability and balance as we move through this rather tumultuous transitory time on uh, dear Mother Earth. So thank you all for being here. I hope you're doing well um, and taking care of yourself. Uh, so without further ado, I'm going to get right into it. <laughs> because Maybe this will get help the nerves, the, the, um, the uh, nervousness to, to dissipate. Let me just take a drink of water. Or not water, tea. Okay, so these messages are messages of love from your ancestors and the angels who love you unconditionally. And if you were guided to the left set of cards, these are your messages. First of all, intuitively, just from um, looking at this image, what I'm feeling guided to say to you is that you are held in the in love, loving embrace of your creator and this is a time this is a time you'll notice there's the the butterfly here um, for you this is a time of immense transformation and i'm really being guided to say that as you move through this transformative time and it feels like um, deep healing is taking place to know that you are loved and supported through this process. And if you're feeling alone and lost and confused, to turn to God, to turn to source, whoever it is that, whatever it is that you call that energy, that loving energy, that creator energy, to turn to God and ask to ask for signs that you are being held ask for signs that you are being supported through this ask for signs that you are on the right path calling on your angels as well i mean a lot of us a lot of people oh we have guardian angels and they've been with us since the day we were born yes that's absolutely true and yet angels do not interfere with our process and they and this is how we really develop our relationship to spirit to god to source is through communication so through prayer we we petition we petition our creator we petition our angels asking for help and then we have to get out of the way <laughs> so we have to trust that once we've asked for the support that it is already on the way and we have to allow that support to come in um, and so there were two other cards under here and this is from the angels guy gods and goddess deck by tony carmine salerno and this is from the Blue Angel Oracle, also by Tony Carmine Salerno. Oh, and you have got the Angel of Relaxation, as well as Sync Synclotron, in Infinite Possibility. And this is a number 39, so that comes to a 12, 
and these ones don't have numbers. But what I'm feeling really here um, is that Archangel Michael is guiding you. You are protected and you are safe as you move through this period of transformation and to really allow yourself again, uh, give yourself space, creating a space in your home. We are now in, we've just moved into Virgo season. The sun has just moved into Virgo. Yay. Um, and this is really about taking care of our health, um, our home space. So what could you do in your home space to create a more uh, conducive to relaxation um, time uh, or environment for you to really um, unwind. I, I do, I'm being guided to say that there is a need for you to take some time off, to take some downtime, I'm sweating, <laughs> um, to take some downtime, maybe getting out into nature. We're summer, we've got about here in the Northern Hemisphere, we have about a month left of summer season. So really getting out and enjoying the summer, really getting out and laying on the body of Mother Earth and allowing yourself to feel the love and support that's there for you. Virgo season is also a really good time to, um, to switch up routines, um, how you care for yourself. Are you getting enough rest? Are you getting the proper nourishment? Are you feeling, um, uh, are there habits that perhaps you could release and let go of at this time? Whatever it is that you are being called to do that supports a more um, balanced lifestyle, a more um, in tune with your heart, a more vibrant um, experience, this is the season to do it. And remember, it takes 21 days to make or break a habit. So Virgo season is more than enough time to, um, uh, to implement some new healthy routines. Uh, I have in the last few weeks really, I've I'm off coffee. <laughs> coffee was a, a, a favorite of mine and it was becoming quite a crutch. I was drinking quite a bit of coffee on a daily basis and then wondering why I was feeling so anxious and uh, unsettled a lot of the time. So I have been off coffee now for um, over three weeks, so over 21 days and I feel great. And so instead of coffee in the morning, I get up and I squeeze one lemon into a cup and I have a hot lemon. And then I, um, I'm working with a coffee substitute, which is um, dandelion and hickory uh, or chicory. <laughs> um, and it's really quite tasty. And so um, implementing some new habits. And remember, baby steps, one thing at a time. A lot of times we want to go all in. And with the going all in, we actually set ourselves up for failure. So really be gentle with yourself as you move through this time. This angel of relaxation says, um, let go of desired outcomes and you will get what you need. And so we don't always get what we want. We always do get exactly what we need. And then infinite possibilities. So working with affirmations, working with, um, you know, spelling, our words create our reality. So what would you, uh, what, would you like to call into your experience? For me, I'm a best-selling number one author, and that is the experience that I'm calling in. And so continuing to affirm what it is, uh, what it is that you desire as if it is already here for you in this moment. And oh, this is perfect. So the message from your ancestors, I think I actually have to turn some light on. So just give me one second, because my, my eyes aren't seen as well as I would like them to. Just one sec. Okay, I don't know if that helps. So I brought my phone so I can have uh, my flashlight on it. So this card is called joy and it's a number 18 
And um, so 18 reduces to a nine. And so as I was saying, it feels like you're wrapping something up. You're in the midst of a transformation. You are in the midst of deep healing. And during this process, you are guided to remember that joy is the ultimate expression. It is the highest frequency, joy and love. These are really high frequencies. And as a collective, we have been in really low vibration, vibrational frequencies such as fear, uh, guilt, and shame. These are really vibrating, they vibrate really low. And so as one who is awake, as, as one who is awakening, it's really important that you keep your vibration as high as possible and that's going to help you to stay into your heart um, and that is you know as you stay into your heart as you focus on your healing work you your what you do has a tremendous and profoundly um, positive impact on the collective so thank you for what you do and joy it says um, uh, the great white hope and the direction is north and the color is white so that's really having me feel like the purity of your heart you know children children um, until trauma touches their life children are generally like really joyful little um, uh, beings of light who just want to sing and dance and play and create and really have fun as God intended for us in each and every day and so the message on this card says, the mind that sees a thou is more understanding and compassionate than a mind that sees an it. We are all a part of the whole and as such are deserving of mutual respect. The buffalo is the, creator gift, the creator's gift and the mystical white buffalo is the covenant. The, white, the great white hope is a bringer of joy remembered. As you hold a white buffalo calf sleeping trustfully in your arms, you overflow with gratitude. You understand the compassion of prayer. You understand your evolution must not be confined to your own learning, for we each have our own song to share. There's a tiny butterfly of transformation upon you but the luminous halo of faith protects you. You know that death transition is your ally and your final teacher. Pray for the betterment of wrongs that you see all around you and embrace that which symbolizes the holy paradise on this earth. Painted white, your face symbolizes the trust you have in the goodness of all that lives. Walk in beauty all the days of your life. Aww. That's beautiful. So I hope those messages uh, felt loving and supportive to you. Don't forget, um, work with prayer. Prayer is your friend. Uh, meditation also is your friend. So prayer is petitioning um, God, source, creator. And meditation is allowing yourself to become an open vessel to receive the um, transmission or the information that they would, um, that they bring to you. So... Thank you. If you were guided to the center card or the center pile of cards, these are your messages. And immediately, um, again, when I connect with this image, I connect with, um, probably because of the cross, I connect with the energy of the Christ, um, Jesus the Christ, our brother. And we are, um, It's this may seem or feel blasphemous to some and yet the truth is is that each of us within each of us is the light of the Christ we are the Christed light incarnate at this time and we are here to resurrect our own light through our path of forgiveness and so for the center pile that's really what's coming through strongly for me is that there is a need for some forgiveness in your experience at this time um, and it could be forgiving the need to forgive someone who um, has uh, betrayed you or, or who has trespassed against you uh, or it really could be about your need to forgive yourself perhaps for 
um, the things you've done, the choices you've made. Oftentimes, this is the sticking point in forgiveness is that we, we easily grant forgiveness to other people or we, we say that we forgive other people um, and, and we move on and yet we still remain stuck, if you will. Um, and that is because the biggest part of forgiveness comes to our ability to forgive ourselves. So is there a need for forgiveness in your experience? Are you being called to forgive yourself? Um, and as you forgive yourself, you will then be able to forgive others. It's just like um, m many concepts like love. You know, lots of people uh, say that they're in love with uh, other people, uh, feel that they're in love and yet they don't really love themselves. So if we don't really love ourselves, how on earth can we love other people? We're only going to love others to um, the best of our ability, which is our ability to love ourselves. And the same goes for forgiveness. We can say we forgive other people, um, but saying and actually feeling it are completely different things. So I do feel like this during this Virgo season, there is a call for forgiveness in your experience and perhaps a call for you to recognize the light of the Christed light, which resides within you. And this Christed light existed before Jesus the Christ. <laughs> okay, so um, it's it, it's been around for eons and eons of time, since the beginning of time, if there is even such a thing. So um, this is not, when I say Jesus the Christ, it's not uh, a religious um, connotation. It is just about who we are innately and what we are innately. So before we get to what that message is, let's get to your angel cards. Oh, yeah. So we have Diva Magic here and incredibly small and it's the number 42, which is six. We are uh, in the Zodiac. We are now in the sixth house, the house of Virgo. And then this one, the angel of addiction healing. And so that's immediately taking me to the forgiveness component. Perhaps some of you are struggling with some addictions at this time or some addictions. Yes, I guess ad addiction is one energy. The energy of addiction is one thing and it always leads back to trauma. And for many of us currently in this experience, trauma happened early in our, um, uh, in our lifetime. And so at the point of trauma, we, children of light, uh, find ways or come up with ways to cope so that we can get through what said experience. And, and oftentimes these carry on into life. And as we get a little bit older, we may get into, we may um, take on addictive tendencies. So addiction can be drugs, alcohol, nicotine, food, sex, um, really anything. What else? There's, I mean, anything. Cars. Uh, it can be anything. And so until we get to the root of the trauma, we will be within that energy of addiction. So I do feel like for some of you, this is what's going on. And I'm feeling guided to say to you that healing begins, um, the journey of healing begins with acceptance. And so if we are struggling with addiction, so for myself, a self-admitted alcoholic, uh, I had over 18 years of sobriety um, and then I didn't. Um, I wouldn't say I slipped, it was a definite uh, plan, <laughs> you know, and gratefully today, again, I have uh, a year and a half or so, I'm not even really keeping track anymore, but again, back on the path of sobriety. And so it takes a lot of courage to admit especially as for, for myself personally, I had a difficult time because I had almost two decades of sobriety. Got sober when I was 24, um, you know, had my, my son in sobriety. Um, and had I not had the slip, 
I would have, you know, almost three decades of sobriety at this time. Um, so it's about forgiving ourselves. And I really, this is the key component. We have to forgive ourselves and we have to accept what is. And so if you are struggling with um, any form of addiction, the first, the first step is admitting that you have a problem. And then um, again, it comes back to that relationship with source, that relationship with a higher power. Um, what do you believe that you are worth? Do you, you know, and, and a lot of times addiction stems again from this trauma and where there's trauma, a lot of times there are the trauma affects our feelings of self-worth. Are we worthy enough? Are we, do we deserve um, to have a beautiful life? Do we deserve love? Do we deserve forgiveness? And the answer to all of those questions is yes, absolutely yes. And so for those of you who uh, were guided to the center pile, um, this is a real call to be honest with yourself. Uh, and if you can't um, vocalize, uh, verbalize the honesty, work with a journal and perhaps write in the journal. And again, talk to God, talk to creator, your higher power, your higher self, whatever it is. Talk to that, that um, energy and allow that energy to guide you through your heart. Um, we're not meant to live our lives in pain. We are truly meant to experience happiness, joyfulness, and freedom, which comes from our uh, an innate place of well-being. And nature. Nature is um, the thing for you. Is Nature is going to support your healing journey. And I'm also being guided to say again, like Virgo season is a perfect time to make positive changes to make positive changes in your life. What, where do you envision yourself a year from now? What does your life look like? And what are the action steps? What are the little actions, the little things that you can do today to support that vision that you see? And this is a time of deep healing for you. And I feel like you will have um, a spiritual awakening or a spiritual renewal through your connection to nature, so spending time in nature. Um, the Angel of Addiction Healing says this is a time of positive transformation and healing. So it's like a snake. In order to shed its old skin, the snake has to kind of be, the snake has to get uncomfortable, right? And so that's the same for us. We often have to get like really uncomfortable <laughs> before we'll make changes. So um, perhaps you're at the uncomfortable stage right now and like a snake, the snake wiggles and rubs itself along the rocks to shed that skin. And once the sh skin has been shed, that snake on the other side is more vibrant and beautiful than it was previously. And so let's see what this card says. Oh, another North, 22. Oh, so this 22, you are truly on the path of mastery. And there, it says that there's two um, live viewers here now. So this is like this energy, this triple two energy. I was going to say, what's the date today? Is it the 22nd? It is the 22nd. So a lot of two energy. This is about the two energy is the high priestess. The, the in, you know, being highly intuitive, standing on your own two feet, um, really standing up for yourself. And, and if addiction is a part of your experience at this time, when are you going to make the choice to stand for yourself, to do something different? We can't continue to do the same thing over and over and expect a different result. Um, in fact, I believe that's the definition of insanity. Um, so and it says that there's two notifications. This is a big message for you. So maybe you've been seeing 222, 22. This is truly, your, you are on a path of mastery. And mastery always is the mastery of self, overcoming the egoic nature of being human and stepping into and embracing our spiritual essence, the essence of God, the essence of love, who we truly are at our core. And this is called the Pathfinder card. And it says, life is a journey shrouded by a veil of uncertainty. Its path stretched exclusively, bef elusively before you. As you live your journey, it is your faith in spirit 
that is the catalyst and the torch that moves you forward and lights the way. Fortunately, spirit lives in all of us. Pathfinder Shaman walks the trail before you, lending his hand in the form of extraordinary symbols. But the shaman is frightening at first because you are not sure what he is presenting to you. What is, what is that, what is that he's carrying? A cross? If it doesn't resonate, what would? Perhaps a lightning bolt or a beautiful clay pot? What are your symbols? What is the central tree or post of your foundation? The pathfinder stands in the physical, but is overcome with the beauty of spirit. He offers all of us, he offers all his wisdom to you. Go deeply within to find that blue sky, your center. And ultimately that is all each of us is responsible for. God, creator, source wants for us to be happy, wants for us to be joyful, wants for us to embrace um, the path that we are here to walk, which is unique to each and every one of us. I can tell you, our Creator did not intend for any of us to be slaves to a grindstone, slaves to a clock, slaves to some oligarchy, uh, you know, <laughs> I don't even want to say it, nameless, faceless um, forces that don't give two hoots about you and I. We must show up for ourselves. We must show up for ourselves each and every day and trust, 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 trust that as children of light, as children of creation, as children of um, the cosmos, the universe of God, we are here for so much more than we have been shown. And I feel that this is the biggest uh, transformation that is taking place on the planet at this time is that humanity is beginning to open their inner eye which is divine and see themselves and each other as what we truly are and all of these external entities that have us um, fighting against one another we're sisters and brothers I mean let's get back to basics here we are sisters and brothers we all are equally divine we are all equally gifted we all are um, have divine rights and there is no external force that has control over you or, or I. It is only the the control that we allow them to have that really has brought us to this really, um, it's actually a heart aching ex place to be in um, and yet there's so much hope because so many people are beginning to wake up and take responsibility for themselves and their life. So. I hope that resonated with you and if you are struggling um, with addictions in any way, shape or form and you would just like someone to talk to, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. Trust me, I've been there, I know how it feels and um, you know, it takes a lot of courage to, um, to make positive changes and you can do it and you're absolutely worth it. And so finally this guy's had me stumped since saturday <laughs> you know the other two i was pretty uh pretty clear on this this guy um what i'm feeling here actually now that i'm connecting with it oh okay so there's a, like a little um you see the over here here there's this wheel here and it looks like so we're in virgo we're in virgo season up at the top so and we're moving into after, well, we're not moving into Libra season yet, but after Libra season, we, it, the energies go below the horizon, sort of the, the underworld. And so we're still in the upper world. <laughs> we're still above the horizon. And I really feel like, I, I also see this as, um, you know, those, um, paint, like a, pal a paint palette. That's what I'm also seeing here. So what I'm being guided to say to you is what are you living the life that you desire? Is your life of your creation and does your life bring you joy? Do you feel free like that little bird? Maybe that's a dove. It could be a dove. Do you feel free and peaceful like the dove? Do you honor your uniqueness or are you struggling trying to fit into some sort of societal norm or some sort of box? 
Um, because if you are, it's like rest assured that societal norms are, are not even close to being normal. Um, and, and again, this is like it was said for the center pile, like are you slave to sl some grindstone or a clock? Because that is not what we intended to be. And when you look at this shaman, this warrior here, this guy is totally unique, right? He's like, he's got it all going on. He's got like a flower there holding in his hand. And then he's got his, the, the antlers on his um, hat there, uh, completely unique. And so this is the strong message I'm getting for you. I'm being guided to say like, allow your uniqueness to shine because that is truly, it is in your unique expression of source of creation where your gifts lie. And, and most, uh, you know, at this point in time, many, many, many um, have not even begin, begun to open their gifts. And so this Virgo season, um, my little dog just did a snore, so she's confirming it's time to open the gifts. Um, this Virgo season is really, I feel like you're being guided to um, step out and play, explore a little bit. What if you didn't have to, if there was no need for money in the world, if there was no need uh, for the nine to five grind that so many people grind their whole life through and then they die. If there was no need for that, what would you do? If money wasn't an issue, what would you do? And sit with that. You don't have to answer it now. You don't have to answer it to me. It's just a question. What would you do if money wasn't an issue? And and therein will be a clue as to um, perhaps where your gifts lie. And so I feel like Virgo season is really asking you to open your gifts from the inside, open your inner eye, because this this ride in the flesh is a limited time. And you know, we've all seen it. We've all had experiences of people who went, you know. Uh, who worked worked until the day they died, right? Or worked themselves to death, and um, you know that's kind of that's kind of the travesty of life at this time. We've we've been so misled, we've been so misguided, uh, and with very little, very few people guiding us to trust our own heart, guiding us back to our heart centered experience, and this is what. I'm here for is to help you come back into your heart and trust that this is truly where the riches in in this lifetime and beyond will be found. It's how we live with our heart and how we, um, as a result, how we live with the hearts of others. Ah, uh, <laughs> so you've got the wing, the wings of light, and the goddess of um, the earth, which is Virgo. Virgo. Did you know Virgo is the only female in the zodiac? Yeah. Virgo is the only female in the zodiac and she is indeed the goddess of the earth. And so again, if you're kind of struggling and wavering, you're not quite sure where to go, your life doesn't feel like it has any meaning or purpose, get to nature. Become one with the trees. Uh, I recently found a really beautiful oak tree on one of my walks and I went past it and then I, it kept calling me back. So I went back and I stood just like that under the tree. I don't think anyone could see me because I was one with the tree. Um, so get out there, allow yourself to feel supported through your connection to nature. Plant your feet firmly on the ground. Take in some nice deep breaths, no pressure. Like there's so much pressure. Um, put upon us from the day we're born pretty much there's all this pressure all this external influence and so many people get to midlife and have no freaking clue who they are and so I'm encouraging you to get to know who you are and you're more than a paycheck you're more than the car you drive you're more than the job that you have who are you who are you get to know yourself this card says uh, an idea connected to imagination, <laughs> creativity, and nature is coming your way. And that's what I was feeling with this guy, right? Like he's so, he's just who he is. 
Oh, that's a beautiful card here. And this is a number 27. So again, it comes to nine. As you get to nature, as you allow your imagination to, to roam wild, as you um, get back in tune with your heart and, and answer that question as to who you are, what makes you tick, um, your wings are going to begin to open. You are going to begin to see yourself in a new way. This card bring, heralds um, positive news coming your way. And again, it really feels like for many of you here, it's like this earth angel energy is what I'm feeling. And it's like your wings want to open up. I am feeling a little bit of tension um, in the back behind the heart. So perhaps this is some of you. And it's like, take those knives. If you feel like you've been stabbed in the back, take those knives out, cut the cords of attachment to things outside of your control, things outside of you, and call your power back because you are here to do great and wonderful things. There's a real call for, um, I feel from your heart down, a clearing. There's a need for clearing the heart, the, the um, solar plexus chakra, the sacral chakra, and the root, as well as the earth star. Um, so again, this time in nature connecting with the trees will really support the clearing of these lower chakras, cord cutting, all of that. It, it's time that you really took responsibility for your experience and to make the most out of your experience. Like this card is really, really speaks of this vibrant joy, this happiness, this real, um, uh, what do I want to say? Etheric, uh, eth ethereal, ethereal, ethereal energy, like very angelic. So working with your guides and angels, I actually feel that they're very close to you and trying to get your attention. So if you don't feel your angels and guides close to you, perhaps it's time to pay attention to the signs you're receiving. And those signs could be numbers. Those signs could be a scent. Those signs could be um, a, a word you hear in a, a passing conversation. Um, they could be um, all kinds of things, <laughs> you know, a bird in nature. Everything's a sign. When you begin to look for signs, then you realize that absolutely everything is a sign. And this card speaks of love, and it's a number eight. Um, and eight is that number of infinity, eternity. So, you know, are you doing, are, is what you're doing in this lifetime, is it in service to your eternal soul? Because we are here in service to our eternal soul. We are all here. It doesn't matter what you believe or not. It doesn't change what is true, divine truth for all of us. We are all here having a temporary human experience in service to our spiritual essence that lives on after the flesh. And so what we do here matters. And if we are miserly and if we are um, unkind, unhappy, I mean, it's like, what do we think that it's going to be like after we leave, <laughs> you know, like after we leave the flesh. And if we've spent our, um, spent our life in service to ourselves, in service to humanity, in service to self, I'm not meaning like, oh, I service to self, like I got to go out there and make all this money and then hoard it and buy all the things that I want to buy. That is not service to self that I speak of. Service to self I speak of is taking time in nature, taking time for your daily spiritual um, um, devotional practices, taking time to do what you love, taking time to find the path of service that you are here for. We are all here. We all came to this lifetime on a mission. And I believe we're all here on uh, missions for source, missions for God. I'm just going to say God. I know a lot of people have issue when you say God and attach it to religious. When I speak of God, I'm speaking of a consciousness. And so we are all here in service to that consciousness. So are you on your path of service? Are you, are you taking care of your needs first so that you're filling up your love cup? You are the chalice of light. You got to fill yourself up so that that chalice overflows and, 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 and ripples out into the world. That's what's being asked of you. And love, let me get my little light here. 
Um, love is all you need and the direction is west and the color is black and so I'm being guided to say some of you may um, be in need of working with some black stones which are very protective to our energy this is shungite I have a lot of shungite around this is another piece of shungite uh, no that's not shungite that one's sodalite sodalite um, but so it's not black <laughs> so working with some black stones tourmaline shungite uh, obsidian anything like that may help you to feel more grounded especially since you're being asked to focus on grounding and getting into nature um, and wearing even black clothing maybe help you to feel more in charge of your own space and your energy okay so it says here rewrite the scary stories you tell yourself create a new vision of your innate beauty and love what you are all you need is love make your sacred shield from the stars and the phases of the moon and define your intent be yourself a beautiful new dream created by your night flights and call in your beloved your soulmate your ceremonial feathers are your wings and your elk horns are your antennae to the ancestors who love you your life is a sacred bundle made up of love and your dreams. You become what you think and dream. If you, ha if you love all that is, you become the great mystery in all things. If you tell yourself a scary story, the world becomes a chimera clouded from view. Rewrite what you tell yourself as a powerful new vision for sleep at night. Release your dove of peace and let her take your fears out of sight. With new intentions, tie your sacred thoughts to the headdress of your imagined success. You have love so that you have roses in winter. That's nice. So this is a really um, powerful, it feels like a very powerful Virgo season. And the focus is on deeper healing, okay? The focus is on creating intentions. What would you like to create? What is the love story that you came to leave in this world? What is the legacy of light that you came to leave? We have a Virgo new moon on the 27th of August. <laughs> which is next uh, Saturday. So as we're approaching this Virgo new moon, we, uh, Mercury is also in the shadow phase. Mercury will be going retrograde um, in early September, I believe. And so there may be things coming up for you now that if you don't deal with them now, if you don't um, face them now, they will revisit again because this is what Mercury retrograde is all about. Um, and so really, I'm feeling guided to say, be mindful of the way that you communicate with yourself because it's also going to be the way that you communicate with others um, and make your focus service to self, service to your divine self. Um, this Virgo season and perhaps for some of you it's about taking a rest this Virgo season and just allowing yourself to show up for yourself each and every day in ways that feel loving and supportive and empowering so I hope something here today touched your beautiful heart um, the nerves have gone away now but I feel like I was really nervous through the whole thing so I trust that um, something has touched your heart. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for being a blessing and a gift in my life. And until next time, I see you. I feel you. I love you. Take good care of yourself because you are worth it.